Hello everyone, we finally have arrests in the disappearance of Veronica Butler and her custody exchange supervisor Jillian Kelly. And it's shocking, but honestly not that shocking considering how extensively we talked in my previous video about the custody battle between Veronica and her ex's family. Police ended up arresting four people connected to the women's disappearance during this weekend. Veronica's ex-mother-in-law and the grandmother of her children, 54-year-old Tiffany Adams was arrested alongside her boyfriend, 43-year-old Tad Cullum. And then we have these two, which is a very strange twist. 50-year-old Cole Twombly and his wife, 44-year-old Cora Twombly. As I said, I'm not shocked about grandma and her boyfriend, Tad, but who the hell are the Twombleys and what are their involvement? From what I found out, it seems like the Twombleys may have been friends of Tiffany and Tad's, but so far police haven't expressed any motives or narrative towards what their involvement is, let alone what any of their involvement is. You can learn from their Facebook profiles, however, that the Twombleys live in Griggs, Oklahoma, which is about half an hour from Eva where the women disappeared. It also seems seems like they own a ranch and they breed blue healer working dogs as well. And I've heard a lot of theories and talk about pig farms regarding this case. A lot of talk about pig farms in the area and that this case may turn into something like the Robert Picton case from Canada where he fed his victims to pigs. So if Veronica and Jillian are in fact deceased, could this be the connection to why the Twombleys are arrested now? Honestly, that's all up for speculation at the moment because police, again, have still been very tight-lipped despite announcing these arrests, but it does make me question things. News Nation ended up capturing the moment when police ended up arriving at the Twombleys' home as well as grandma's home, and police ended up arriving in a convoy of military-style SWAT vehicles as well as police cars. And there was a horde. It said that police were heavily armed, they were very cautious, and they announced on a loudspeaker that they were there for the arrests. So I'm going to play that for you all now because it seems like police were taking all precautions in these arrests. Who captured this exclusive footage of law enforcement closing in on the suspects to execute the four arrest warrants in both Texas and neighboring Cimarron County. We spotted more than 20 police and SWAT vehicles at one point following them to various locations outside the Twombly's property. We heard an officer on a loudspeaker announcing we have a warrant for your arrest. All officers appeared heavily armed and prepared for a gunfight in case of resistance. They also seemed wary of all who approached drawing guns to turn people back including us. Now we also know because of the information that's been released that police suspect foul play after they ended up finding the women's missing vehicle abandoned a thousand feet off the side of the road near Highway 95 in Road L, south of Elkhart, Kansas. And these arrests are confirmation of the worst possible outcome, sadly because all four of these individuals have been booked into the Texas County Jail on two counts of first degree murder, two counts of kidnapping, and one count of conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree meaning police suspect that Veronica and Jillian are most likely deceased, which is absolutely heartbreaking because that means Veronica's two young children are now without a mother, allegedly due to a very tumultuous custody battle, and that Jillian was caught up in the middle of this as a innocent victim of circumstance, it seems. And she also has children and a family that are now without her. And we don't know for sure, but this all seems to be over a custody battle, which is just... It's ridiculous. And that's because what we do know is 10 days before both of these women went missing, Veronica ended up petitioning the court for more visitation and she was also seeking full custody. So could this be a repeat of the Pike Day massacre on a small scale? It's starting to seem like it because I mentioned in my first coverage of this case, the Pike Day massacre, and that seems to be something that people are relating this case to. And in the case of the Pike Day massacre, the father of those children and his family ended up going and murdering the mother of his children and her family over a custody dispute. He wanted the mother of his children and her family to have nothing to do with their child. And he also thought that another child of hers was his, but it ended up not being. It was just a complete mess because as I said, him and his family ended up going and murdering her and multiple generations of her family, which it doesn't make sense to me when people do stuff like this because one, how do they not think it's gonna be obvious that they were involved? Clearly, they're not criminal masterminds. And considering the circumstances when you're in a heated custody battle and then the person that's trying to, you know, dispute it goes missing, they're gonna look at you first. And on top of that, why do they think even possibly losing custody is better than going to jail and being stuck behind a jail cell because then you're for sure not getting custody? Like, it just doesn't, makes sense. It's ridiculous that people think murder is the solution to problems like this. 
at this time, it's being reported on multiple different sources that the foul play that was found in the vehicle was actually different amounts of blood. I've seen both small amounts of blood outside the vehicle and inside the vehicle to like large amounts of blood being reported. And I've also seen reports that the women were allegedly shot, which is something that I also brought up in the first video when we talked about how these women were possibly pulled over or stopped. Unless this ended up happening at the pickup spot and they were ambushed at the pickup spot, it's the question of how does someone stop a moving vehicle? And I brought up the fact that maybe someone threw something at the window so it would make the women pull over and that's why the window was smashed or someone shot at the windows, which is how the vehicle would eventually end up pulling over and the windows would also be smashed. That would also, you know, result in blood possibly. So that seems to kind of be where things are kind of moving towards. Again, please haven't confirmed any of that, but multiple news sources somehow got their hands on this information. So just take it very lightly because again, police haven't confirmed these suspicions and these allegations. However, it seems to be widely reported at this point. One article reading, and I quote, News Nation previously reported that a small amount of blood was found inside the vehicle, but sources now say that there were also separate puddles of blood outside of the vehicle, end quote. So at this point, it just seems like this is now a recovery mission. And the fact that the meetup spot ended up turning out to be an abandoned gas station is not only so scary, but like how dangerous is that for a custody exchange spot to be an abandoned gas station in the middle of nowhere, an extremely remote location with no security cameras to capture the exchange or whatever happened there, no witnesses to be around. It's honestly the perfect place for someone to commit a crime. And even if this wasn't a heated custody battle, it still is very dangerous to do any kind of sort of exchange or even meet up with someone in a very remote location. And I'm also very curious what evidence police have to have secured these arrest warrants because it must have been something really good for them to finally take the step and you know go and arrest these four people grandma her boyfriend and the twombly couple clearly they must have some kind of strong evidence to connect them to jillian and veronica's murders and this is what osbi had to say it's a long process there's there's a lot of steps that go into a uh, investigation like this but um in order to you know arrest those that we believe are responsible um for the disappearance of veronica butler and jillian kelly um it's something that we are very appreciative of all the help and not just local law enforcement but the local people too these arrests make me question a lot of things such as how much wrangler knew about this was he somehow involved in the plan despite being in rehab even more so if he was will police be able to prove that he was involved because that's the big point. They have to be able to prove it. Because in my opinion, they had to be talking of some sort. Wrangler's the one who technically does have custody of the children. It's not his mother. This custody battle has been drawing out for years now at this point. And you cannot convince me one way or another, even just from the limited information that we do have, that Grandma Tiffany came up with this completely on her own and her son had not even a speckle of an idea that she was planning something. But hey, police are gonna have to prove that. They did bring in the FBI, so it seems like the FBI is possibly, you know, providing resources to do a lot of ballistic testing and possibly like DNA evidence and all of that stuff. And so. they have all of the big important equipment. So you think, especially for a very small town like this in the middle of nowhere, they are using all of the FBI's resources. And that's extremely good because a lot of times police, you know, have an ego and they don't want to call in the FBI to help. And honestly, with something like this, especially a small police department that doesn't have those kind of resources to call someone in who does, that's a big step. And I think that's something to talk about. Like, it's very good that they called these kind of people in and they didn't let their egos take over wanting to, you know, solve the case themselves. And clearly now we see very quickly in the grand scheme of things, we have four arrests now. And honestly, considering how heavily armed the police were when they went to arrest these people, which in my opinion says that they know a lot about how dangerous these people might be, I'm not surprised that no one's been talking in this case and I'm not surprised that police told all the immediate family and friends and everything to keep their mouths shut. Because not only did they wanna not you know, tip off these people so they'd run, it seems like they may be a lot more dangerous than we think. The Oklahoma panhandle has a lot of small town mentality. It seems like a lot of these people are said to love weapons. And I mean, we see just from these arrests that it seems like people in this area might feel like it's okay to take problems into their own hands. So hell, especially since they weren't arrested at that point in time, I'd be scared to say something wrong because maybe they'd show up on my doorstep. Now that these four have been arrested, maybe people will start talking more. It seems like police really want to get a solid case here and actually make this, you know, an actual case to go to court, which is great. 
And you know, there's time and place for things. It really makes me wonder too, seeing how police handled this case, considering the Sebastian Rogers case, how quiet police have been, maybe police in that case know more too than we know. Maybe they're wanting to keep their mouths shut so they don't tip off certain individuals there as well. Makes me think. At this point, no bodies have been found, but Jillian's mother allegedly ended up posting on her Facebook and I quote, Jillian has passed away, end quote. And as we know, police have arrested these four people for murder. So it does seem like, again, this is a recovery mission and no longer trying to find two missing people. And my heart truly goes out to Veronica and Jillian's families. As I said, they both have children. They both have families that love them. And this seems to all be over nothing. It truly is over nothing. These people should have let the courts decide. Clearly the courts were siding with Wrangler and his family this entire time. So I don't know why they'd think after all this time that they're gonna just go side with Veronica. Yet for whatever reason, Tiffany and her little horde of goons there that were arrested seem to have thought it would have been a better decision to just take matters into their own hands, allegedly at this point. But it's just awful. It's just completely awful. But sadly, things like this happen more often than we even know. This isn't the first time something like this has happened and it sadly probably won't be the last. It's just this case is getting more talked about than some other cases. But I will continue to keep you all updated as information comes out because I'm sure now that these arrests have been made, more stuff will be coming out. But I just wanted to give you a quick little update since there were four arrests and some big things have happened in this case. But as always, I hope you stay safe out there. Lock your windows and doors. Don't go to any abandoned places or remote locations when you need to meet up with someone. Definitely don't do that. Please don't do that because I'd love to see you in the next video. Okay.